Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is the Plant Basic Series Episode 6 and this is all about gutation. In this series we cover the basics of plants, structures, functions, features and generally how plants actually work. And we do this to learn more about our plants so that we can hopefully care for them in a better way. Before we get into it I would just like to ask if you could like, subscribe or comment or interact with this video in any way which just lets me know how you guys are feeling about the content. It has been a little while since I've filled one of these and that is because these videos generally take a lot more prep time than my other videos and that is because I need to research and understand the topic myself in order to talk to you about it so that I have a clear idea in my head and I have been very busy in the last couple of months with work so now things are easing off slightly I have a bit more time to give to these videos and so I thought it would be a great idea since the last episode was on extra floral nectaries this episode is on gotation which can appear to be very similar. In the last episode I asked did you ever notice some droplets on your plants and we covered extra floral nectaries in that video which is more of a sticky substance and can occur on kind of different parts of your plants. But gotation while it can appear to be very similar in the form of droplets it can be in maybe slightly different locations such as the end tip of your leaf and they are generally not sticky and more kind of water-based. In episode two we covered cellular structure and episode four we covered how water moves through plants. So you really do need to watch those videos first so that you can understand this one better because we're always going to be building on information here. So we know from those episodes that stomata are pore-like structures in the cellular structure of a leaf and these facilitate gaseous exchange through the leaf structure. When we water our plants, we saturate the substrate that it is in. Now this obviously does not go for semi-hydro or hydro growing, which is like leka or pan and things like that where water is kind of constantly flowing. But in a similar way, your substrate will get saturated and leka balls can also get saturated as in they are full of water to the brim. And this substrate holds onto the moisture so that the roots have a chance to take it up. This is why if you have like a super airy mix or a, a mix that is very porous or kind of rocky, that water can move through too fast and doesn't allow enough time for the roots to actually take it up. So when our substrate is saturated, the roots take up water via the root hairs through a process known as osmosis. We've covered this in episode four. This water then moves through the plant and gets taken up into the cells of the plant. The xylem cells transport this water through the stem and then up through the leaves. Within the plant cell then itself, there's something called a vacuole and the vacuole is kind of responsible for maintaining the balance of water in a plant cell. But as we've covered, there can be different states that the cell is in versus whether it has too little water and it becomes basically collapsed and desiccated or it can have too much water and it becomes really turgid and kind of pushed out. It is in this phase where the cells are super full of water that gutation actually occurs. So when the soil is saturated and the roots of your plants take up the water that it needs, it moves throughout the plants, it gets into the plant cells and the plant cells become turgid and full of water, there is still some pressure from the roots in terms of the water balance of the plant. There is still pressure being pushed up into the cells of the plant even though they cannot take on any more water. So the plant needs to release this pressure on the plant cells before it causes any damage. So gutation is the process of exudation, so basically like exiting, of xylem sap which does contain mostly water but also contains minerals that is taken up through the substrate through the water and it basically pushes out this xylem sap through 
little pores in the tips of the leaves or the edges of the leaves. So in my houseplant collection, the plants I most commonly see this on are my philodendron. So on some of my philodendron plants, I would see guttation droplets on the tips of the leaves. So we know that transpiration happens during the day when stomata are open, but at night, the stomata are closed and guttation happens at night. So where does it actually come out of the leaf cell then. So gotation actually happens through structures called hydrothodes and these are essentially pores in the epidermis layer of a plant cell and this is not present in all plants, this is only present in certain types of plants. This is very common in aquatic plants that are constantly submerged so that kind of makes sense that there's I mean, they're submerged in water all of the time, they will have to do something to release the pressure in their plant cells or the plant cells are going to burst and become damaged. So this is very, hydrothodes are very common in the plant cells of aquatic plants. So the root pressure from osmosis pushes water through the plant cells and then out through the hydrothodes in the plant to release this pressure at night. Hydrothode structures themselves can be active or they can be passive. And as I noted, in general, what's moving through these hydrothodes are water with dissolved minerals inside it. Some studies have shown that actually hydrothodes are really important in certain number of plants for detoxifying. So the plant can actually release excessive salts or excessive nutrients through the hydrothodes so that it doesn't damage the structures within the plant itself. On the flip side of that though, the presence of hydrothodes as it is kind of a pore can also be a structure where um, pathogens and certain bacteria can also get into the plant cells itself which can cause diseases and some issues that way. And hydrothodes can be in different locations in the plants as well. They don't necessarily have to be on the leaf but as I noted personally in terms of indoor plants, philodendron are the plant I mostly see this on. So most importantly, what does this actually mean for our plant care and how can we learn more about our plants knowing this, knowing that gotation happens when there is excess water going through your plant. Now, no plant care is absolutely perfect because we are imperfect. And as I noted, gotation does occur quite frequently on some of my plants. Now, what you really want to look out for is, I noted that gotation is basically the release of pressure on a plant cell due to excess water. But if that isn't efficient enough, it can actually lead to damage on your plant cells, which I have also experienced in some of my plants, particularly philodendron. So obviously I have an overwatering issue with some of my philodendron. Now, this never escalates to the stage where I would start to experience root rot and things like that. I think that is something that happens way more down the line and is probably a more serious issue, but you can get slight damage on plant leaf cells due to overwatering, and this normally happens around the same time as gotation, so that can tell you. So what happens in some of the plant cells where I see this damage is they kind of become translucent and they lose a bit of that, I guess, deep green color that you can see because they are translucent and they look damaged. They look like something has damaged them. Now, often, if you don't know what this is, this can appear to be a pest issue as well. So you have to keep an eye out for that. So if you are noticing gotation on some of your plants, just keep an eye on your watering, keep an eye on how frequent you're watering, or are you saturating the soil like too much? I am someone that likes to saturate all the soil in my plant pots. That is my kind of style of watering, I guess. But in some plants, this may actually be too much. And that is obviously based off how much substrate you have, what your outside environment is like, and how fast that kind of dries out or not, what type of substrate, and your plant care style in general. So this is how we can apply this knowledge to our plant care. Just keep an eye on your watering and watch, are your plant cells getting damaged or are you getting it kind of just before that point? And so you may be able to release some of that pressure by just slightly adjusting your watering routine. So that is it for gotation. It is quite a short one, it's quite simple, but I don't want to overload you with information either. This is really, personally, what I think is as far as you need to know to understand the process 
how it happens in plant cells, how it affects your plant care, and what it actually tells you about what your plant is experiencing in your care. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, a comment, or subscribe if you want to see more of my content. If you do have any suggestions or any topics that you would really like to know more about in terms of the basics of plants or plant care, then please leave your suggestions down below in the comments section. I am planning on continuing this series and kind of keeping it to small little simple snippets and topics that we can understand as we go along. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye!